It's time for really quick equity and excellence in teaching tips. I am your host, Michelle Singh, an educator, professor, author, student, and mother. I'm happy to share this topic from the Equal Methodology, which is a framework for diversity, equity, and inclusion in education. So let's get right into our conversation. Belonging is more than just a word. Belonging is the bridge that connects students to their potential, as the quote says. When students feel a sense of belonging, they become more engaged in their learning. They become active participants in their learning journey and they contribute to classroom activities. Belonging to me is providing a space for an immigrant girl to share a little bit about the country that she recently immigrated from so her classmates could understand why she spoke a certain way, why she dressed in a uniform when no one else did, why she had certain mannerisms and, and why she ate certain foods. Belonging to me is also a child being able to see examples of who they are and who they hope to be in what they are learning. And, and that for me was the way that my daughter saw judges and attorneys who looked like her. And now she is on track to be an attorney herself. Belonging to me is a teacher who recognizes the cultural qualities of a shy student and then nurtures that hidden leadership potential in that student, helping them to feel valued and, and secure. See, belonging is the heart of culturally responsive teaching, which is a powerful approach that ignites students' positive self-identity and it strengthens their belief in their own capabilities. As educators, we have the incredible opportunity to create an environment where belonging flourishes and students thrive. So I invite you to join me as we explore three remarkable ways culturally responsive teaching fosters a sense of belonging for our students. Number one is by amplifying students' voices. Number two is by aligning with cultural projects. And number three is by activating reflection activities. So let's dive into the first topic, which is amplifying students' voices. There's just so much power in our teaching when our students have a voice in their own learning journey. There is excitement and motivation and confidence. Students get to share their thoughts and their experiences and their perspectives and, and their diverse viewpoints and, and ideas all while contributing to the classroom community. And we can facilitate a transformational experience like this for our deserving students. One practical way to achieve this is by offering flexible uh, assignments or flexibility in assignments where we give students the freedom to choose topics or projects that resonate with their personal interests and cultural backgrounds while still being in alignment with the curriculum and the standards that we are required to teach. So by granting students this level of autonomy, we're empowering them to take ownership of their education and connect their experiences to the academic requirements. One of the projects that I did with my students uh, was called Haikuing History. It seamlessly blended writing and social studies. Students were given the opportunity to select a historical figure or a historical or cultural event or a social justice movement that they were interested in or that intrigued them. And through research and exploration, they crafted multi-stanza haikus that beautifully encapsulated the essence of their chosen topic. The topics they chose range from Juneteenth to Diwali to the Japanese internment camps to Jim Crow. And this project not only allowed students to express their voices, but also garnered recognition, uh, winning grants and even being featured in um, education conferences. So we're gonna now shift our focus to our second topic, which is aligning cultural projects. So think about this, what if in your classroom, you created a space that embraced and celebrated students' 
cultural heritages, a space where students got to explore and research their own backgrounds, gaining a deeper understanding of their identities while fostering an appreciation for the diversity that is within their communities. That is what Aligning Cultural Projects is about. You can assign projects or assignments that allow students to explore and research their own cultural heritage or even those of others in their communities. One powerful way to accomplish this in your classroom is by creating opportunities for students to share and teach their peers about their cultural traditions and their celebrations. So how about organizing a cultural traditions showcase where you encourage your students to choose a cultural tradition or celebration that holds significance in their families or their communities, such as the Chinese New Year or Ramadan or Dia de los Muertos or even Carnival, right? So through presentations and artwork and even written reflections, they can showcase their cultural identities and their contributions. And by doing so, they gain a broader worldview. They, they get to nurture that empathy that is within them. They get a deeper understanding and respect for each other and those in their communities. So now let's move on to our final topic, which is reflection. So reflection is a powerful tool that can foster this growth and create a supportive learning environment for our students. Uh, in your classroom, your students can develop a strong sense of self-identity and belonging. You can create a space where your students recognize and celebrate their unique strengths and aspirations and, and again, personal growth. And this can be done through journaling, through self-reflective prompts, or even goal-setting exercises that encourage students to develop that positive self-identity and sense of belonging. So here's a practical way to implement reflection with your students. You can introduce them to the strengths resume or my strengths reflection activities. You wanna encourage them to identify and write about the skills that they excel in such as problem solving or creativity or leadership or risk-taking or organization or resilience or even empathy and even the things that they are good at like playing video games and gardening and babysitting, right? Ask them to compose a, a, a brief description or paragraph describing their strengths and, and how these strengths contribute to their overall identity, who they are and even who they hope to be. And then provide a platform for students to share their reflections with the class, allowing for celebration and appreciation of everyone's unique, unique strengths. Okay, folks, we have reached the end of our talk about how culturally responsive teaching fosters that sense of belonging through amplifying student voices, through aligning with cultural projects, and through activating reflection activities. Together, we have explored three practical strategies that you can use to create a dynamic and inclusive classroom where every student feels valued and, and heard and empowered and appreciated. So thank you for investing your time in this important topic and for your openness to furthering your understanding about our topic today. We recognize and appreciate your commitment to the equity and excellence in teaching journey that we are on. But before you leave, I want to share one final thought. By honoring students, cultural heritage and experiences, culturally responsive teaching instills a profound sense of pride and appreciation for the students' backgrounds. It opens doors to self-discovery, to growth, to stronger connection uh, between the students and each other and the students and their learning and the students and their communities and the students and the teachers and the students and all the stakeholders, right? So now I invite you to reflect on this. How will you actively incorporate culturally responsive teaching practices to contribute to your students' development of a positive self-identity and a stronger sense of belonging in your classroom? 
let this question guide your teaching journey as you create a classroom environment that celebrates diversity and, and fosters belonging and nurtures the full potential of each student. The next move is on you. So let's put these ideas to work. Take time to implement and time to reflect. And don't forget to join the conversation. I invite you to share your thoughts and progress with our community online at LCTE Learning. You may even use the hashtag learn with LCTE. We look forward to engaging with you. Thank you for watching.